Hi everyone, Kevin here. Today, I wanna to show you my favorite top 10 tips and tricks in Microsoft OneDrive. As always, if you wanna jump around this video, feel free to use the timestamps down below in the description. Before we jump in, I wanna do a quick refresher on what OneDrive even is. OneDrive is a cloud storage provider. If you've ever used Google Drive or Apple's iCloud before, it's the same thing as that, except this is Microsoft's version. Basically, you store your files on Microsoft's servers. Why would you ever wanna do that? Well, there are three main benefits. First off, you get anywhere access to your files. So if you were to say, come on a tour of the Kevin Cookie Company, you'd still be able to access all of your files, even if you're far away from home. You could also back up and protect your files. So let's say you drop your laptop into a vat of boiling chocolate, your files are still safe. Lastly, you can also share and collaborate on your files. So let's say you're working on a recipe with your team for new cookies. Well, you could share it with them and they could work on that same recipe. To get the most value from OneDrive, you need to sign up for a premium plan. Now I'm personally on the Microsoft 365 family plan and for $100 per year, you get six terabytes of total storage. Now I back up all of my YouTube videos in my OneDrive and I haven't even passed one terabyte yet. Oh, and as an added bonus, you get all of these other apps like Outlook, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, along with all of that storage space. And with that all out of the way, this brings us to tip number one. You can use OneDrive to back up all of your photos and videos on your phone, whether you have an iPhone or an Android phone. Here I am on my phone and I have a bunch of pictures that I would love to back up. I have a bunch of pictures of my son and then I have a whole bunch of pictures of me in front of a green screen. Trust me, this isn't just for my personal collection. Collection, I use these for my YouTube thumbnails. To be able to back up your photos and videos on your phone, first off, you need the OneDrive app, and you can get this through the App Store on an iPhone or the Play Store on an Android phone. Simply search for OneDrive, and you should see the OneDrive app as the best result. If you don't have it yet, go ahead and install it. Otherwise, click on Open. Once you finish downloading and installing the OneDrive app, we're very close to being able to back up all of the photos from our phone to OneDrive. To make sure this is turned on, up in the top left-hand corner, let's click on our profile picture. This opens up a menu. Next, click on Settings. Within Settings, about halfway down, there's a section for Files and Photos. Let's click on the one that says Camera Upload. Within Camera Upload, you can check which account you wanna upload photos to. I have my main account checked on. Down below, you have a few different options. You can indicate whether you wanna use a mobile network. I currently have that toggled off because I have a limited amount of data and I don't wanna use it up for backup. Instead, I'll wait until I get home and I have Wi-Fi before I back up photos. You can also decide whether you want to include videos. Videos will take up a lot more space, so you can decide if you want that all to go towards your OneDrive account. In this case, I like backing up both my photos and videos, so I have this toggled on. Down below, you can also decide how you want to organize your photos. Right now, I have it set to month, so it'll group all my photos by month. You can also set it to year, or you could simply have it all go towards a photos folder and have no organization in place. Once you finish setting this up, you'll see text within OneDrive that lets you know that your photos are currently uploading. I have 66 more photos that need to be backed up. Here I see an icon in the bottom right hand corner letting me know that this photo is currently only on my phone. Once it's been synced to my OneDrive, I won't see this icon anymore. This brings us to tip number two. You can use the OneDrive app to scan in documents and it uses technology from Office Lens. Office Lens does a far better job than what your default camera on your phone can do. To be able to use this within the OneDrive app at the very bottom, let's click on the camera icon. This opens up your camera and here you can see that I'm currently pointing my phone at a document. This is when I hit 100,000 subscribers on YouTube and I wanna make sure I don't lose this, so I wanna create a digital copy of this. Along with being able to take photos of documents, you can also take a picture of a whiteboard, business card, or just a traditional photo. Now, this is a document, so I'll select document down here. You'll see that it highlights the borders of the document in this blue box. That looks good, so I'll take a photo. It's now taken a photo, and here it's identified the borders of the document. I'll click on confirm. Here now, you can see my document, and it's cleaned it up quite a bit. Look how nice this white background looks. Down below, I can add additional photos to the scan. I can apply different filters, I could crop it, and then you have some more options. For example, if you wanna rotate it or maybe add some text. Right now, I'm all good, so I'll click on done. On the next screen, I could decide where I wanna place this file. I'll simply put it in my files folder. 
Once I'm all ready to go, I'll click on this check mark. Here now on my PC, I can see the document that I scanned in. And I don't know about you, but this is a pretty nice document scan. The background looks really good. It captured all of the detail and all I had to do was take a photo on my phone and it's now available on my PC and anywhere else I happen to be working. This brings us to tip number three. You can share cloud files and collaborate with others on those files. Here I am on OneDrive.com and I see a whole bunch of files related to the Kevin Cookie Company. I have a franchise agreement right here that I want to share with some of my team members and then we can all work on this file together. I simply right click on the file and within this menu there's the option to share. Let's click on that. This opens up the share dialog and right at the top I see that anyone who I share this with can edit the document. By clicking on this I can change that setting. Let's say for example I only want someone to be able to view it. Right down here, I can type in names of people who I wanna share it with. I'm gonna type in one of my favorite coworkers, Adele, right into this field. I could type in additional names and I could also type in a message. Now, if I don't wanna type in any names up here, I could also just copy a link to this file by clicking on this text. This will place a link on the clipboard and then I could paste it in an email or anywhere else that I wanna share it with someone. Once I'm ready to go, I'll click on the button that says send. Along with sharing on OneDrive.com, I could also share files directly through Windows. Here I am in File Explorer and I have the same document on my computer. I could right click on it and right here at the top I have all of these different OneDrive controls. Up here I can share the file. This opens up a very similar shared dialog to what we saw on OneDrive.com. Here too I could type in names, I could type in a message, or I could just copy the link to be able to share this file. I've now shared the document with Adele and over on the left hand side you can see my screen and over on the right hand side you can see Adele's screen. The great thing about say sharing documents or photos or any type of content is you can all work on them together. Together. Here once again I have the franchise agreement and I want to insert the partner's name. And this is Cookie Monster, so I'll replace this text with Cookie Monster. When I type it in over on my screen, you'll see on Adele's screen, it reflects the changes pretty much instantaneously. So it makes working together extremely easy. This brings us to tips number four and five, and they also have to do with sharing. Now previously I shared an individual file, however you can also share an entire folder. Here, just like with a file, I can right click on it and then let's click on the option that says share. This once again opens up the share dialog, except this time let's click on this text that says anyone with this link can edit. This now brings us to tip number four related to sharing. You can set your share links to expire. Within link settings towards the bottom, you can set an expiration date. Now, I don't wanna share this indefinitely. Who knows what people are gonna look at in a year from now. Instead, I'll click on this text and I can set it to expire this Saturday. When I click on this, I can now share the link with someone and they'll have a very limited window to be able to access whatever contents I have in this folder. And right underneath that, we have tip number five. You can set up a password to protect your sharing links. So right down here, let me type in a password. I'll simply type in password. Believe it or not, this is one of the most commonly used passwords. So if you ever need to guess one of your old passwords, maybe you have millions of dollars of Bitcoin hidden away, try password and see if that works. Once you're all ready to go, I have an expiration date, I have a password, I'll click on apply. Now that I've applied those different settings, here I see a calendar icon letting me know that it expires. I also see a lock icon, and now I can go ahead and share this file just like I did before. This brings us to tip number six, and that's the personal vault. It's the one that looks like a safe in your OneDrive account. So what is it and how is it different from a standard folder in OneDrive? Well, here I could click on any one of these folders and I could click in to view the contents. However, that's not the case with the personal vault. Let me click on this and let's see what happens. When I click on this, I need to use two-factor authentication to verify my identity. I'm going to open up my phone and type in the secret code, and once it verifies my identity, it'll log me into the personal vault. I'm now in the personal vault, and this is the perfect place to store things like maybe a photo of your passport, maybe your driver's license. In my case, I use it to store our top secret recipes for the Kevin Cookie Company. I need a little bit of extra security for that. I also have all of my passwords for my $100 million worth of Bitcoin. I'm just kidding, I don't have that much Bitcoin. Before you try to hack my account, this is totally just a made up file. Up in the top right hand corner, once I'm all done looking at all of my personal vault files, I can click on this icon and I can now log out. I'm back in my main OneDrive view and once again, my personal vault or my safe is now locked again. 
If I don't log out, it'll automatically log out of the vault after 20 minutes, at which point I have to use two-factor authentication to access my vault again. This brings us to tip number seven for any documents that you store on OneDrive. So let's say a Word document, an Excel spreadsheet, or a PowerPoint presentation, you can access the version history. So let's say someone goes in or maybe you go in and you make a few changes, but you didn't like those changes, you can go back to an older version. To access version history, simply log into OneDrive and go to the file that you wanna see the history for. You can right click on it and within the context menu at the very bottom, there's the option for version history. Let's click on that. This opens up the version history viewer and over on the left hand side, I can see the current version of this slide presentation. Down below, I can also see all of the older versions. If I wanna say jump back to a previous version, all I need to do is click on this text and that'll bring me back in time to that previous version and then I can start working from there again. Tip number eight, you can decide whether you keep files just on OneDrive or on OneDrive and on your PC. When you have File Explorer open and you're within OneDrive, you can go down to one of your files and right click on it. Here, you see all of the different OneDrive options right here in the context menu. Now, down below, you can decide whether you wanna always keep on this device. What that means is the file will be on both OneDrive and on your computer. If you wanna save a little bit of space on your computer, you can also only keep it on OneDrive, in which case you can click on the option that says free up space. Now, I'm a big fan of keeping multiple backups. I like having things backed up on OneDrive and on my PC. So for all my files, I choose to always keep on this device as well. Tip number nine, you can embed files from your OneDrive account onto websites. Here, for example, I have our employee benefit handbook and I wanna put it on our kevincookiecompany.com website so all of our employees can go on and access it. To embed it, you can right click on this or click on the ellipsis to show all of the actions. Within this menu, there's the option to embed. Let's click on this. This opens up a menu over on the right hand side and here we can see the embed code. I'll click on this and then click on copy. Now that I've copied the embed code, I wanna put it into my website. I used Google Sites to create my website, but you could also use WordPress, Wix, or any other service and you can insert your embed code. To embed on Google Sites, I'll go over to the right hand side under the insert tab and then click on the option that says embed. This opens up a dialog and I can either embed a URL or embed code. I copied embed code, so I'll click on this. Next, I could paste in the code that I copied from OneDrive. One thing that's interesting, if you want your content to appear larger, you can adjust the width and the height right here within the code. I'm going to leave it to the default and then click on next. Here I can see a preview of what I'm going to embed and it looks exactly like I'd like it to. So next I'll click on insert. I've now inserted my PowerPoint onto my page. And once again, if I wanted this to appear larger, I can go in and I could adjust the width and height. For now, this looks good and I'll click on publish. Tip number 10, and unfortunately, this is the last tip of today. I know it's sad we've reached the end of another top tips and tricks, but don't worry, there will be more to come in the future. And this one is very handy. You can get back files that maybe you deleted accidentally, and also maybe something catastrophic happens and you lose everything in your OneDrive account. Don't despair, you can recover everything in your OneDrive account. First off, let's see how you can get an individual file back. Over on the left hand side, there's the recycle bin. When we click on this, you'll see all of the files that you recently deleted. You can go through and you can restore individual files. You can also restore all of the items that sit in your recycle bin. Items only sit in the recycle bin for 30 days. So if you deleted something and you need it back, the sooner you do it, the better. Now let's say that something really bad happened and you need to restore your entire OneDrive. You can do that as well and you don't have to do that through the recycle bin. Instead, let's go up to the top right hand corner where there's a settings gear. When we click on this, let's next click into options. Within OneDrive options over on the left hand side, let's click on restore your OneDrive. And here we can restore our OneDrive to a previous time. We can restore it anywhere back to one month in the past. Here's a drop down list and I could restore yesterday, a week ago, three weeks ago, or even a custom date and time. Here, if I choose one of these options, I could also visualize when changes happen to my OneDrive account. And here down below, I can see what those changes were. Once I'm ready to restore all of my files, I can click on the button that says restore. It's very similar to version history that we looked at earlier for one individual document. However, this applies to your entire OneDrive account. 
it's a pretty handy tool to make sure that you never lose critical content. All right, well, if you learned some new tips and tricks today, please give this video a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like this in the future, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Lastly, if you wanna see me cover any other topics on this channel, leave a note down below. All right, well, that's all I had for you today. I hope you enjoyed, and as always, I hope to see you next time. Bye.